making free use of the written memorials concerning him which they had received, and the oral statements which they had heard from their several masters. And we shall not be far wrong if we determine its date as about the beginning of the third or the end of the fourth century before Christ. End of the introductory note. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 1 1. The Master said, In learning and straightway practicing, is there not pleasure also? When friends gather round from afar, do we not rejoice? Whom lack of fame cannot fix, is not he a gentleman? 2. Yu Zhu said, A dutiful son and brother is seldom fond of thwarting those over him. A man unwilling to thwart those over him is never given to crime. A gentleman nurses the roots. When the root has taken, the truth will grow, and what are the roots of love? but the duty of son and of brother. 3. The master said, Honeyed words and flattering looks seldom speak of love. 4. Cheng Zhu said, Thrice daily I ask myself, Have I been unfaithful in dealing for others? physics, but with moral and political conduct. The Lunyu, Analects or Sayings of Confucius, were probably compiled, says Leg, by the disciples of the disciples of the sage, making free use of the written memorials concerning him which they had received, and the oral statements which they had heard from their several masters. And we shall not be far wrong if we determine its date as about the beginning of the third or the end of the fourth century before Christ. End of the introductory note. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 1 1. The Master said, In learning and straightway practicing, is there not pleasure also? When friends gather round from afar, do we not rejoice? Whom lack of fame cannot fix, is not he a gentleman? 2. Yu Zhu said, A dutiful son and brother is seldom fond of thwarting those over him. A man unwilling to thwart those over him is never given to crime. A gentleman nurses the roots. When the root has taken, the truth will grow, and what are the roots of love, but the duty of son and of brother. 3. The master said, Honeyed words and flattering looks seldom speak of love. 4. Cheng Zhu said, Thrice daily I ask myself, Have I been unfaithful in dealing for others? Have I been untrue to friends? Do I practice what I preach? 5. The Master said, To guide a land of a thousand chariots, on our business, be true and sparing, love the people and time thy claims upon them. 6. The Master said, the young should be dutiful at home, modest abroad, heedful and true, full of goodwill for the many, close friends with love, and should they have strength to spare, let them spend it upon the arts. 7. Susia said, If a man honor worth and forsake lust, serve father and mother with all his strength, 
be ready to give his life for the king, and keep faith with his friends, though men may call him rude, I call him learned. 8. The Master said, Of a gentleman who is frivolous, none stand in awe, nor can his learning be sound. Make faithfulness and truth thy masters. Have no friends unlike thyself. Be not ashamed to mend thy faults. 9. Cheng Zhu said, Respect death and recall forefathers. The good in men will again grow sturdy. 10. Chu Tin said to Chu Kung, The master, on coming to a country, learns all about the government. Does he ask, or is it told him? Chu Kung said, The master learns it by his warmth and honesty, by politeness, modesty, and yielding. The way that the master asks is unlike other men's asking. 11. The master said, as long as his father lives, a son should study his wishes. After he is dead, he should study his life. If for three years he does not forsake his father's ways, he may be called dutiful. 12. Yu Zhu said, In daily courtesy, ease is of price. This was the beauty of the old king's ways. This they followed in small and great. But knowing this, it is not right to give way to ease, unchecked by courtesy. This also is wrong. 13. Yu Zhu said, If promises hug the right, word can be kept. If attentions are bounded by courtesy, shame will be banished. Heroes may be worshipped if we choose them right. 14. The master said, A gentleman who is not a greedy eater, nor a lover of ease at home, who is earnest indeed and careful of speech, who seeks the righteous and profits by them, may be called fond of learning. 15. Zhu Kung said, Poor, but no flatterer, rich, but not proud. How were that? Good, said the master, but better still were poor, yet merry, rich, yet courteous. Zhu Kung said, where the poem says, if ye cut, if ye file, if ye polish and grind, is that what is meant? The master said, Now I can talk of poetry to thee, Zhu. Given a clue, thou canst find the way. 16. The master said, Not to be known should not grieve you. Grieve that you know not men. End of book one. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Carl Manchester, 2006. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics, edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book two. One. The Master said, In governing cleave to good, as the North Star holds his place and the multitude of stars revolve upon him. 2. The Master said, To sum up the three hundred songs in a word, they are free from evil thought. 3. The Master said, Guide the people by law, subdue them by punishment, they may shun crime, but will be void of shame. Guide them by example, subdue them by courtesy, they will learn shame and will come to be good. 4. The Master said, At 15 I was bent on study. At 30 I could stand. At 40 doubts ceased. At 50 I understood the laws of heaven. At 60 my ears obeyed me. At 70 I could do as my heart lusted and never swerve from right. 5. Meng Yi asked the duty of a son. The Master said, Obedience. As Fan Chi, a disciple, was driving him, the master said, Meng Sun asked me the duty of a son. I answered, obedience. What did ye mean, said Fan Chi, to serve our parents with courtesy whilst they live, said the master, to bury them with all courtesy when they die, and to worship them with all courtesy. 
6. Meng Wu asked the duty of a son. The master said, What weighs on your father and mother is concern for your health. 7. Su Yu, a disciple, asked the duty of a son. The master said, Today a man is called dutiful if he keeps his father and mother. But we keep both our dogs and horses, and unless we honour parents, is it not all one? 8. Su Hsia asked the duty of a son. The master said, Our manner is the hard part. For the young to be a stay in toil, and leave the wine and cakes to their elders, is this to fulfil their duty? 9. The master said, if I talk all day to Hui, the master's favourite disciple, Yen Yuan, like a dullard, he never stops me. But when he is gone, if I pry into his life, I find he can do what I say. No, Hui is no dullard. 10. The master said, Look at a man's acts. Watch his motives. Find out what pleases him. Can the man evade you? Can the man evade you? 11. The master said, Who keeps the older kindle and adds new knowledge is fitted to be a teacher. 12. The master said, A gentleman is not a vessel. 13. Su Kung asked, What is a gentleman? The master said, He puts words into deed first and sorts what he says to the deed. 14. The master said, A gentleman is broad and fair. The vulgar are biased and petty. 15. The master said, Study without thought is vain. Thought without study is dangerous. 16. The master said, Work on strange doctrines does harm. 17. The master said, You, the disciple Su Lu, shall I teach thee what is understanding? To know what we know, and know what we do not know, that is understanding. 18. Su Chang, a disciple, studied with an eye to pay. The master said, Listen much, keep silent when in doubt, and always take heed of the tongue. Thou wilt make few mistakes. See much, beware of pitfalls, and always give heed to thy walk. Thou wilt have little to rue. If thy words are seldom wrong, thy deeds leave little to rue, pay will follow. 19. Duke I, Duke of Lu during Confucius' closing years, asked, What should be done to make the people loyal? Confucius answered, Exalt the straight, set aside the crooked, the people will be loyal. Exalt the crooked, set aside the straight, the people will be disloyal. 20. Chi Kang, head of the Chi clan during Confucius' closing years, asked how to make the people lowly, faithful and willing. The master said, behave with dignity, they will be lowly. Be pious and merciful, they will be faithful. Exalt the good, teach the unskillful, they will grow willing. 21. One said to Confucius, why are ye not in power, sir? The master answered, what does the book say of a good son? An always dutiful son who is a friend to his brothers showeth the way to rule. This also is to rule. What need to be in power? 22. The master said, Without truth I know not how man can live. A cart without a cross pole, a carriage without harness. How could they be moved? 23. Su Chang asked whether we can know what is to be ten generations hence. The master said, The yin inherited the manners of the Hsia. The harm and the good that they wrought them is known. The Chu inherited the manners of the yin. The harm and the good that they wrought them is known. And we may know what is to be, even a hundred generations hence, when others follow Chu. The Yin, the Hsia and the Chu were the three dynasties that had ruled China up till the time of Confucius. 24. The Master said, 
to worship the ghosts of strangers is fawning. To see the right and not do it is want of courage. End of Book 2 of The Sayings of Confucius This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Sayings of Confucius From the Harvard Classics 1909-1914 Edited by Charles W. Eliot Book 3 1. Of the Chi having eight rows of dancers in his hall, Confucius said, If this is to be born, what is not to be born? 2. At the end of the worship, the three clans made use of the Yung hymn. The master said, The dukes and princes assist, solemn is the son of heaven. What sense has this in the hall of the three clans? 3. The master said, A man without love, what is courtesy to him? A man without love, what is music to him? 4. Lin Fang asked, What is the life of ceremony? The master said, A great question. At high tides, waste is worse than thrift. At burials, grief outweighs nicety. 5. The master said, The wild tribes have kings, whilst the realm of Xia is without. 6. The Qi worshipped on Mount Tai. The master said to Rang Yu, Canst thou not stop this? He answered, I cannot. Alas, said the master, dost thou set Mount Tai below Lin Fang? 7. The master said, A gentleman has no rivalries, except perhaps in archery, and then, as bowing, he joins the winners, or steps down to see the loser drink, throughout the struggle he is still the gentleman. 8. Zixia asked, What is the meaning of Her cunning smiles, her dimples light, Her lovely eyes so clear and bright, The ground not yet with colors dight? The master said, Coloring follows groundwork. Then does courtesy follow after, said Zixia. Shang, said the master, thou hast hit my meaning. Now I can talk of poetry to thee. 9. The master said, I can speak of the manners of Xia, but for Qi witnesses fail. I can speak of the manners of Yin, but for Sung, witnesses fail. This is due to their dearth of books and great men. Were there enough of these, they would witness for me. 10. The Master said, After the drink offering at the great sacrifice, I have no wish to see more. 11. One asked about the words of the great sacrifice. 12. The master said, I do not understand them. Could one understand them, he would overlook the world as I this. And he pointed to his palm. 13. Worship as though those ye worship stood before you. Worship the spirits as though they stood before you. The master said, If I take no part in the sacrifice, it is none to me. 14. Wang Sun Jia said, What is the meaning of, 
it is better to court the kitchen god than the god of the home. Not at all, said the master. A sin against heaven is past praying for. 15. The master said, Two lines of kings have passed beneath the ken of Jo. How rich in art is Jo. It is Jo I follow. 16. On entering the great temple, the master asked how each thing was done. One said, Who says that the man of Zhou's son has a knowledge of ceremony? On entering the great temple, he asked how each thing is done. On hearing this, the master said, Such is the ceremony. 17. The master said, To pierce through the target does not score in archery, because men differ in strength. This was the old rule. 18. Zhegong wished to do away with the sheep offering at the new moon. The master said, Thou lovest the sheep, Zhe. I love the right. 19. The master said, Treat the king with all courtesy. Men call it fawning. 20. Duke Ding asked how a king should behave to his ministers, how ministers should serve their king. Confucius answered, A king should behave with courtesy to his ministers. Ministers should serve their king faithfully. 21. The master said, The poem, The Osprey, is glad, but not wanton. It is sad, but not morbid. 22. Duke Ai asked Zai Wo about the shrines of the garden spirits. Zai Wo answered, The Xia emperors grew furs round them. The men of Yin grew cypress. The men of Zhou grew chestnut, meaning jest not over holy matters. On hearing this, the master said, I do not speak of what is ended, chide what is settled, or find fault with what is past. 23. The master said, How shallow was Guan Zhong? But, said one, was not Guan Zhong thrifty? Guan owned Sang Gui, and in his household none doubled offices, said the master. Was that thrift? At least Guan Zhong was versed in courtesy. The master said, Kings screen their gates with trees. Guan too had trees to screen his gate. When two kings make merry together, they have a stand for the turned-down cups. Guan had a turned-down cup stand too. If Guan was versed in courtesy, who is not versed in courtesy? 24. The master said to the chief musician of Lu, How to play music may be known. At first each part in unison, then a swell of harmony, each part distinct, rolling on to the finish. 25. The warden of Yi asked to see Confucius, saying, No gentleman has ever come here whom I have failed to see. The followers presented him. On leaving, he said, My lads, why lament your fall? The world has long been astray. Heaven will make of the master a warning bell. 26. The master said, All beautiful and noble is the music of Shao. The music of Wu is as beautiful, but less noble. 27. The master said, Rank without bounty, ritual without reverence, mourning without grief, 
why should I cast them a glance? End of book three. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kathy of www.skippopscratch.com. The Sayings of Confucius from the Harvard Classics. Edited by Charles W. Eliot. Book 4. 1. The Master said, Love makes a spot beautiful. Who chooses not to dwell in love? Has he got wisdom? 2. The Master said, Loveless men cannot bear need long. They cannot bear fortune long. Loving hearts find peace in love. Clever heads find profit in it. 3. The Master said, Love can alone love others, or hate others. 4. The Master said, A heart set on love will do no wrong. 5. The Master said, Wealth and honors are what men desire, but abide not in them by help of wrong. Lowliness and want are hated of men, but forsake them not by help of wrong. Shorn of love, is a gentleman worthy the name? Not for one moment may a gentleman sin against love, not in flurry and haste, nor yet in utter overthrow. 6. The Master said, A friend to love, a foe to evil, I have yet to meet. A friend to love will set nothing higher. In love's service, a foe touch him. Were a man to give himself to love, but for one day, I have seen no one whose strength would fail him. Such men there may be, but I have not seen one. 7. The Master said, A man and his faults are of a piece. By watching his faults, we learn whether love be his.